How to increase the Git clone timeout in a Jenkins pipeline. There may be some times when you have to clone a large Git repository. Depending on your network speed, you may or may not be able to make it within the timeout that is default for Git, which is 10 minutes. So how do you increase that timeout? That's what we're going to look at in this video. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.346.2. And attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has a very constricted network access. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has the two different Jenkins files that we're going to be taking a look at. And let's go ahead and go take a look at that gist. What we have here is our Jenkins file that we're going to run, which actually I've already run it, so you won't have to wait for 10 minutes. And we do a basic checkout using the git scm against this git repository. Now, in real life, this git repository is only 16 meg. So on a network that has plenty of speed, this clones really quickly. But I have restricted the amount of network bandwidth for my agent down to just 64k. So it takes a lot longer for this step to complete. Let's go over and take a look at what happened when I ran this specific Jenkins file. So we'll go ahead and go over here to git clone timeout. Let's take a look at number three. You'll notice over here that it timed out at 10 minutes. Let's take a look at the log for that. We can see here when the git fetch starts, we can see at the end of it, there is a timeout set to 10 minutes. And that is in alignment with what we saw from the stage view saying it failed in 10 minutes, two seconds. It takes a couple of seconds for the job to start up and then it ran for 10 minutes, at which point the get timeout kicked in and stopped the job. So how do we adjust that timeout value? Well, let's go over into the pipeline syntax. We'll select checkout and let's scroll down to add additional behaviors. We'll click on add and then let's select advanced clone behaviors. If you scroll down to the section here, we can set a timeout in minutes for the clone and fetch operations. That's what we want to adjust. So in our case, if we go and take a look at what we're going to have here, I'll go ahead and type in 120, just 120 minutes, picking a very long time. If I click on generate pipeline script, what you'll see here is there is an extension section that has a value of timeout 120. Let's go back over to our gist. Well, let's compare these two gist items here. We can see that we're pretty much in line branches, but notice extensions here and notice extensions down here. So if we scroll right, we're adding in this whole section of extensions, but really the only value that we care about in this case is timeout 120. Now let's go back over to our controller and let's take a look at the other job run, which was job run five. You'll notice overall that the job ran in about 20 minutes and it did complete. So if we take a look at the console log, when we run our git fetch, which is right here, we can see that the timeout is set to 120. Now, again, this is a very contrived example. I have highly restricted my network access and slowed the speeds way down. Again, 64K. So as you can see, we're able to go ahead and finish that clone or the fetch as the case may be. And then it would continue on and run if we had any other steps in our Jenkins file. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.